demonstrate today is how to add your first application to FortiWeb Cloud. So your login portal will be fortiweb-cloud.com. And once you, when you go to this site, it will direct you to this landing page, which has some information about the product if we scroll down. Uh, but primarily what we're interested in here is to go ahead and log in. And we'll log into FortiCloud, which is where our account is. If you have two-factor authentication turned on, you'll you'll be uh, requested to go in and approve that. And this is going to take us to the main management portal for Forda Web Cloud. Now, in this case, I already have several applications uh, deployed, but let me go ahead and add a new application. So for the web application name, it can be whatever descriptive name makes sense to you. And then we have to enter in a valid domain name. And as you can see, we can, alt we can add multiple domains as part of the same application. Click on next, select the service, service ports that your application uses, typically 80 for HTTP and 443 for HTTPS, and then select the origin. <coughs> <laughs> the origin server. Now, in this case, we'll automatically. <coughs> pardon me. In this case, we'll automatically do a, a DNS lookup and come up with it. Come up with the IP address. Uh, but if there's something about your configuration that tells you to put something different there, you can override that, and you can test the origin server here. It was tested successfully, so we know that Four to One Cloud can reach the application's origin server, and we'll click on next. Then it will it will uh, it will determine what the uh, the uh, best region to run the WAF out of. In in this case, this application is not actually hosted in AWS, but it determines that we'll get good service from uh, the AWS East region. Or you can turn on the uh, CDN option. So uh, important to know about Fortiweb Cloud is that we offer at no additional charge a uh, content delivery network to accelerate and optimize your uh, client performance. Uh, this is a very simple and easy to use um, solution. It is turned off uh, by default uh, to allow for the fact that you might already be using some other CDN solution. Next, we'll ask if you wanted to enable block mode uh, as you for, uh, in your initial configuration. Uh, and this could be a good idea if you're pretty comfortable that your um, your needs are ba pretty basic. Often, though, you might want to leave that turned off if you want to do some testing before you enable block mode. Uh, you can also apply a pre-configured template. Uh, so in this case, if you have an application that's either one of the applications for which we've created a template or you've created your own, you can apply that at this point rather than having to go through and do a bunch of manual configuration. We'll click on save. And you'll see that we have our uh, configuration in this. The next step is going to be to change your DNS configuration so that your uh, public facing DNS name now points to the alias provided here. Um, so right now, currently, when we go to this domain name, we're, we're, uh, the current DNS record points you to this IP address. We need to go in and change that so it's an alias for, for this uh, DNS name. And that's uh, pretty much all there is to, to it. Yeah, you've added your application at this point, and it'll, it'll say here, update pending, meaning it's waiting for us to make that DNS change. Um, now, once you've made the DNS change, usually that will replicate uh, within, you know, re usually within a few minutes or you know, 10 or 15, 20 minutes at most. Uh, however, um, you don't have to wait to go in and do your configuration, so you can simply collect, select your, uh, your application and you'll go to the main dashboard and you can begin making uh, changes to your configuration. A couple that I encourage most uh, users to go ahead and turn on immediately, aside from blocking mode, which we talked about already, which is up here, is you can also go through and add additional modules. 
Uh, and this is a place where you can go in and add additional settings. And the one that I really encourage everyone to turn on is anomaly detection. This is going to turn on the machine learning capabilities, and it's going to allow you to detect uh, threats based on them being unusual for how your application actually behaves. Um, and there's a number of other additional optional modules. Again, there's nothing in here that causes additional charges. It's all, uh, but there are additional options in here uh, that are available to you. Thank you.